What is up, everybody? It is Guy Smiley here, and welcome back to another mock review. This time, we're going to be taking a look at this custom LEGO United Nations squad that I've made. We have a couple different United Nations themed vehicles here. We have some pickup trucks with a large gun in the back. We have a large armored vehicle. We have some drones, and we have the actual minifigures themselves here, complete with their signature blue helmets. So let's take a look at the drones and the minifigures first. First. So this drone design was featured previously in a cyberpunk scene that I did a long time ago But when I back when I first first made these drones, I actually made many different uh, Different uh, color versions of it. I made a dark green version right here as you can see And I also had a dark gray version as well as the dark tan version that was in the original scene But I actually sold all of those because I do sell these so if you guys want to buy one Be sure to just send me a message on Instagram. They are $20 each with the stickers applied and $15 each if you guys want to apply the stickers yourself. So if you guys want to buy one, be sure to send me a message and uh, we can do the deal on Instagram. Um, I still have uh, quite a few of these white ones and dark green ones in stock. But for the white ones here, they have some really cool stickers. We'll use this one here because he doesn't have a gun right now. And he has some stickers on his uh, his uh, chest, some like armor plating there with the UN insignia. He has some armor plating on his legs as well as like a numbering right there on the bottom. He has some hazard symbols on his arms, uh, which uh, either could be his like his uh, his uh, squad insignia or just uh, kind of to warn people to stay away from the drone because he's dangerous. <laughs> and uh, he also has on his on his uh, his eye sensor thing there. He has a little sticker that goes around the entire thing. And on his head, this is actually a printed piece from the Lego Star Wars Snow Troopers. And then uh, he has a backpack, as you can see there. The stickers on his arms do go all the way around as well. Um, the thing about mate, when you apply stickers to a round thing like this, especially like homemade stickers... Um, the sticker paper that you buy is not the greatest, uh, on Amazon, you know, so you do have to, uh, cut out the stickers so they go all the way around and actually connect with themselves. Otherwise, over time, they will peel off. So that's why on the arms, the stickers do go all the way around and, uh, they connect with themselves right there. And, uh, same thing with the, uh, the, the, the head. So the stickers go all the way around on the head there. And then on the on the uh, the backpack here, we have a sticker on his his uh, antenna, uh, an arrow going up because um, that way you know which way the antenna goes. <laughs> um, I feel like it's kind of uh, uh, common on Lego sci-fi builds to place unnecessary arrows and uh, hazard symbols because they just look cool. And then on the other one here, we have... A uh, gun. He has a gun from the the uh, Creo line. Uh, that was uh, kind of uh, Hasbro's version of Mega Blocks, and they sold these in the stores. I don't think Creo is around anymore, but they had some really awesome parts. And I got this gun in uh, kind of a, a pack that was uh, kind of their version of the collectible minifigures. It was in like a GI Joe collectible minifigure pack, and uh, they, it's really cool. It's a really awesome gun. I wish I could buy more of them. Actually, I think there's probably some on eBay. But they has, it has like a front grip and a back grip, and it fits in the drone's arm is very perfectly actually uh, a lot better than brick arms because uh, the drones need kind of a bigger gun to be able to hold it properly so for the un soldiers here they use custom combat brick accessories they have combat brick helmets and combat brick uh, vests, a tactical vest. Here we have the plain plate carrier on this guy. Uh, this has a stud on the back. And then on this guy, we have a uh, plate carrier with with uh, pouches on the front and then nothing on the back on this one. So uh, they look really awesome. I love, to, love the design of the helmets here. They have a little hole in the front that you can put night vision goggles if you want. And I love the, how they just sit on the, on the heads. They look really good. Um, uh, Brick Arms does make a helmet similar to this, and I think that it does come in dark blue and blue, but um, it, I don't really like the way it sits on the minifigure's head. It looks a little bit dated in my opinion. It doesn't look very modern. I like how there's there's space in between on the inside between the helmet and the head. Brick Arms just sits f straight on flush with the minifigure head, so uh, these these look really good in my opinion. Um, the the uh, the uh, the torsos, the bodies, and the legs are custom printed by Citizen Brick. On this guy, I'll take off the the head, so you guys 
guys can see what the torso looks like. So it just looks like that. And we have custom short sleeves. This is from the Citizen Brick uh, Green Beret minifigure that I got a long time ago. I did a minifigure Mondays video on this minifigure if you guys want to see more about that. Um, the other minifigure uses a uh, old Citizen Brick uh, camo rig. Uh, the body and the legs, and uh, unfortunately, I, you can't buy any of these anymore because they're all sold out. But uh, if you guys have any recommendations, if people uh, are, are looking for uh, some camo bodies to make UN minifigures with, be sure to leave them in the comments below if you guys know anybody that has a good one in stock right now. Uh, but this one here is from Citizen Brick. It's very old, and I think it's a little bit rare and valuable now. Um, it's just a camo, just a very generic camo torso. Uh, these both work great for uh, modern military uh, UN and minifigures because I feel like you usually see UN soldiers wearing a kind of a camo similar to this. They wear dark green camo with um, uh, the blue helmets, of course. The pickup trucks are the same design that you guys saw in my Egypt scene that I made for the World in Darkness group, and they're also the same design as the dark tan ones that you saw in a previous mock review. Um, so I'm getting a lot of mileage out of this design, but you know, it's a really great design, and I figured I spent so much time making sure it looked great, you know, why not get as much use as I can out of it and make a lot of different variants of that design. So we'll take a look at this one right here first. Um, well, they're both the same, actually. Um, I am selling these, too. So if you guys want to buy one of these, they're $50. Um, they come just like this. They can, they come assembled with the stickers already applied. And uh, they include all the little things on the top here. They include the, the spotlight and the sensor array there on the top. So message me on Instagram if you guys want to buy one of these. Um, this one here is special because it does have a big ol' anti-aircraft gun in the back. Um, when you buy it, it, this is not included. This is like just something that I added on for the picture of these trucks. Um, this anti-aircraft gun was inspired by the ones that I always see on the Toyotas of War Instagram page. You always see little Toyotas with big, massive guns in the back of them, so that's kind of what I wanted to do with this truck. It does have some printed tiles there as sensors to give it kind of like a futuristic look because it is supposed to be futuristic. Um, this, I would assume that this would be, be controlled by somebody either inside the, inside the truck or with like a like a remote control uh, that's not on this truck because there's not really enough room for somebody to sit in the back of it. I couldn't figure out how to get enough room for a minifigure to sit back there um, and make the gun still small enough to fit in the back of the truck. So uh, it is kind of like a futuristic version of a anti-aircraft gun. Um, it does have a, a really cool, um, you, it uses some really cool pieces here. It uses a Lego black sausage here as like a little like stable stabilizing thing for the barrel of the gun. Uh, it kind of like comes up here and then stabilizes and if it was like go down this would move move out move uh, back and forth. And uh, then this piece right here is one of these these hoses here these ribbed uh, flexible hoses. Uh, this is a great piece to use on your Lego builds if you want to add some texture to it because it has some really nice texture on there and it looks very accurate to what like a uh, a gu the guns, big guns like this usually have some kind of texture there around the barrel where it, where it like goes in and out when uh, it shoots uh, to like absorb the recoil a little bit. So yeah, really awesome design here. Uh, leave a comment down below if you guys want me to do a tutorial on how to make this anti-aircraft gun design because uh, I think I might do a tutorial on how to make a couple designs like this. I think that'd be really cool. Um, and then for the truck itself, um, we have... Uh, a spotlight on the top, as I said before, and a sensor array, and then a antenna on there as well. Um, and then we used, we, it has rear view, rear view mirrors. It has like a, a running board down there to step up onto, to, for people to step up on, into the truck. Uh, the mirrors, I really like the use of this, uh, this piece here. This is actually like one of those, um, uh, wrench pieces and they fit onto a stud and it just barely fits right there underneath the mirror under, underneath the uh, the windshield here and uh, Then I can put this piece right there to add the uh, rear view mirror part of it. Uh, here's the bottom um, as you can see, it's very complicated down there. There is a lot of things that have to be hidden down here uh, and uh, things that have to be very complicated to get these fenders to be perfectly situated as they are here. Uh, these are brick built fenders, which is very hard to do. They do Lego doesn't make like pre-made Lego ones, but I wanted to do brick built ones for these trucks here. And I think they look very, very nice. There are stickers on the front. These are stickers, not decals. I just printed them out on sticker paper and then I was able to cut them out and put them on the front and on the side of the truck right there. Uh, the trucks, as I said before in the previous videos about them, they don't 
fit a minifigure because um, there's just not enough room because the windshield and, and the windows are all brick built. So there's just not enough room for a minifigure inside there. And I just really wanted to make the the, uh, the most accurate pickup truck I could. And uh, since I didn't actually want to put a minifigure inside, it allowed me to do a lot of stuff to make it look a lot better than if I had that constraint of having to have space on the inside for the minifigures to sit. And finally, we have the big armored vehicle here. Uh, this is also a design that you guys have seen before. It is uh, the uh, the same design as like the EU uh, heavy combat vehicle that I made. Um, I did a, a mock review on it a very long time ago. Uh, this is just that vehicle in white with some added stuff on it. Um, it's uh, it's a design that I really love, actually. I really love how I was able to get it to look. The only thing is, it's a little bit big, I think, compared to a minifigure because, as you can see, a minifigure is like only like half the size of it and I don't think that in real life um like armored vehicles like this are like like uh, so the minifigure is six feet tall like 12 feet tall um maybe they are actually you know they're pretty big but yeah I feel like it is just a little bit too overscaled and I am working on a new armored vehicle that is a little bit smaller so keep an eye out for that uh, I think it's scaled a little bit better than this one is and the tires are just massive on it too uh, the tires I don't think are very accurate in size but uh outside of that you know it's a very it's a really cool looking design um so the uh, it does have opening doors on both sides um i didn't put the actual seats inside because this was um uh, I didn't really want to finish it. Uh, this was actually a kit, I think, that I was going to sell, but I ended up just keeping it because I, I, I wanted to have a white version of this for my own collection. And then on the back, it does have a opening door in the back, and it opens down like that. So there is a lot of space inside there for minifigures to sit. Um, I think it can fit like uh, it can fit two drivers, uh, one one driver, and one passenger, and then two minifigures in the back here sitting, uh, one in front of the other. Um, they can't sit side by side, unfortunately. There's just not enough room with the way I built, like, the fenders and everything. Um, they take up too much space. And then, um, here's the front. Uh, the old version did have some lights in front, but I actually, uh, changed that and I made it so that, um... The front is, there's no lights, there's just uh, the, the grill, and then these pieces here kind of come over and make a really nice angle for the grill opening. So that's very nice. It has a winch right here with some rubber bands on there to simulate the uh, string that I would have, but I don't have it, uh, didn't put the string on there. I just used to use rubber bands for that. And then the big thing is, uh, the, the, big, the big thing is these things. And you guys might be wondering, what are these things and why are they there? Um, number one, they look really cool, but number two, I actually saw pictures of some, uh, of the, uh, the, the armored vehicles that the army uses, and they have these big things over the top like this, uh, similar to this, because where these things operate, they're so big, and they're, the power lines hang very low, so what these things are for is they're just moving the power lines out of the way when they're driving under them, and that's so they don't get caught on all the stuff that's on top of the truck, like the machine gun right there so i thought that was really cool and i had these big big pieces of flex tube here uh these are our official lego pieces here they're just very long pieces of black flex tube and i was like well, why not try to replicate that on like a modern uh, military vehicle for uh, the united nations and i think it works out really cool it looks really awesome you know i mean Anytime you can add more flex tube to a build, it increases the awesomeness level by like 10 points for every inch of flex tube that you add, I think. And here's a close up of the gun right there. As you can see, this is the same design as it had before. Um, I really love this design though. It's a really awesome design. It can go up and down as well. I would assume it's controlled by on the inside of the truck with like a remote control. Um, it does have the ammo, the uh, magazine right there that holds the ammo, the ammo canister. And then I used a piece of of flex tube on the um on the barrel to, uh, to so that it would have an actual uh, barrel opening there because if you just use a solid bar there's not going to be an actual barrel opening on the end so that looks really nice for that this piece right here is the end of one of these old lego um hose pieces right here so these can be removed from the end of the old lego hoses and then you can actually use them on your builds it's one of my favorite pieces actually to use because it's so like unique in terms of the way it looks uh, lego doesn't really make another piece like that these days so you have to use the old ones though you can't do you can't remove them from the new ones because the new ones look slightly different they look like this so you have to get the ones that are like 
uh, that were released pre like ni- uh, two th- uh, 1995 or something around there somewhere. So uh, then we have some lights right here. We're using some opaque, nice opaque one by one pieces. Uh, on this one, these are actually decals right here. And these are water slide decals. So I printed them out and uh, sealed them and I cut them out and applied them to the model. Uh, water slide decals do look a little bit better, I think, than the stickers because they're actually clear and uh, so the like the, the the white on the stickers is actually like slightly different than the color of the Lego bricks themselves. But if you use clear water slide decal paper, then you don't get a, a different color white around the actual logo. The the white of the Lego bricks just comes through on the clear areas of the decal. So that's why water slide decals are slightly better than stickers. They just take longer to make because um, you do have to spray them with like a sealant before you actually dip them in water and put them on. So yeah, um, there is this truck. And I think that is going to be it for this video. And I think that is going to be finally it for these designs of this pickup truck and this armored vehicle here. Um, because this that's all three of the variants that I have of these. So you guys uh, will not be seeing these again on the channel because I don't have any more variants to show. Um, but be sure to send me a message on my Instagram or leave a comment down below and I can direct you there if you guys want to buy uh, one of these trucks or one of these drones here. Uh, for your own collections and be sure to leave a like on the video and subscribe to the channel as well and i will see you guys in the next video